past eight is the time. Many of us will be spending time with family and friends this Christmas in the festive period, but despite the festivities, there are people for whom this time of year is one of the loneliest. Two Californian filmmakers have made a film focusing what they see as the growing pandemic of loneliness. It features people from all across the world, including the United States, Canada, and here in the UK. Joan Whittle reports. And I have been lonely. I just managed to pull myself up and start again. But oh yes, I know what it's like to be lonely. Eleven years ago, Lynn West's husband, John, died suddenly of a heart attack, aged 74. Neighbours in the Shropshire village of Martin rallied round, but four years later, she moved to Shrewsbury for a fresh start, joining an exercise class. I think when you went out somewhere and you were with lots of people, and you can be with lots of people, but you can still be lonely. <laughs> it was when I went home and went into an empty house. The isolated and lonely are the invisible in this world. A film about loneliness featuring people from America and Shropshire features a usually outgoing Lynn volunteering as a telephone buddy for Age UK, calling lonely people for a chat. It was good because it brought to light the problems of, of being lonely. And that's why I'd like to encourage other people that I've been like that. I have come on. I've tried very hard. And loneliness isn't just some mildly unpleasant. The film premiered at the Old Market Hall in Shrewsbury. It was masterminded by filmmakers Stu Maddox and Joe Applebaum from San Francisco. As we were um, looking at different stories, we found some in very remote areas. We found some in very urban areas like New York or, or London. And then we found stories happening here in Shropshire that really kind of are very relatable to other communities around the world. It's the largest uh, inland rural county, I believe. Just the distance between people. They found contributors through AGK. What I really like is it gives some solutions as well. So it's, it, it gives examples of things that people do to bring themselves out of that loneliness. What we want to do is make this the launch point for community screenings around the country. So if anybody knows of a community that would like to bring this film to them, that's what we do. We're social impact filmmakers where we hope to spark a conversation. And Lynn, who has a loving family and friends, has come a long way and she's movingly honest. I talk to his photographs sometimes. <laughs> you know, um, that, that keeps him alive. I, 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 I know he's not here. But he is still here. I can still feel him here. Jan Rittle, BBC News. Well, we're joined now by Alex Hossigan, founder of the Chatty Cafe Scheme, and also by Jacinta Ashdown from Age Concern. Jacinta, Alex, good morning to you. Morning. I'm fascinated by this Chatty Cafe. Um, what made you kind of think up the idea and kind of get the network going? Uh, it was when I was a new mum, so I had a kind of newborn baby. I um, was spending a lot of time going around the town centre with the pram, going into shops and cafes, and you kind of get a sense that you're out and about, but you're not really speaking to anyone. Um, and it was just being in a cafe one day and, and looking around and seeing an elderly person on their own looking really fed up, um, someone with a disability and a carer just sat staring, and then me and the baby. And I just kind of thought it'd be nice if there was a way we could have all uh, sat together you know, if we wanted to in that moment. And so did you approach them at all? Or no, because no? obviously you just feel like, you know, you might be, can't, they might think what you're after. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it just got me thinking about a con the concept. So then how did that develop? Uh, it was just about a year later. I just thought, right, I'm going to give it a go. And it was just going with my little baby Henry around to cafes and just seeing if they'd do it. And then just setting up social media and just plugging it really. So how does it work? Yeah, Sorry, I was going to say yeah. the same thing, the practicality, is there yeah. a sign, what's it, So basically, it a cafe joins the scheme um, through the website, it's £30 a year. We send them look, all the publicity, all the marketing, we put them on the website, um, and then they have a table like once a week at the same time and day, and then we, we try and match a volunteer to that table as well. Have you, uh, it's such a lovely, I mean, it's a, it's a very, it's the simplest of ideas in a yeah. way. So have you sort of, Given it's your scheme, have you sort of watched it happen? Have you have you sat in one of the cafes and seen and seen it work? You know, someone's been there and then someone else has come in and it's happened. I haven't personally because I'm actually a social worker full time in the day. So but I have I get obviously all the feedback and there's two people that work full time on it. 
Um, and like last week we had like one with 40 people there. Um, you know, get we, we get feedback all the time. So it's it's so nice. It's just a nice thing. Just into, I think, you know, Charlie hit the nail on the head, really. It is the simplest idea, but Absolutely. it is such a common feeling. And, you know, when Alex was saying, I was walking around with Henry, Henry, her baby, you know, obviously part of society, but not feeling connected to anyone. That loneliness, you can be lonely in a crowd. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's the feeling that you have inside you. Um, you know, if you're with a load of people, you can still feel absolutely alone. But if you're alone, you can not necessarily feel lonely. So you need to recognise those feelings within yourself. There's also that feeling, isn't there? And I, I hope it's changing, but almost at once, once upon a time, if you said, I'm lonely, you could almost be embarrassed by saying yeah, it or, or so. feel ashamed of saying it. You might seem to be someone who has everything that anyone could want. Yeah, There's to so say out loud. many people that are lonely now, and it's 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 something that seems to be getting bigger and bigger. And I don't quite know why. Whether it's COVID, whether people are more willing to talk about it, women are more willing to talk about it than men. So it's it's so difficult if somebody doesn't acknowledge it within themselves, because being lonely is a sign that something needs to change. And they need to take a first step, even if that's to say to one person, "Will you help me?" Alex, I mean, you're, you're from age, age, age sorry, uh, Jacinta. You're from age concern. Yes. And age in itself is a compounding factor, isn't it? Yes. Because yes. being lonely is a bad thing, no matter what yeah. age. When you're lonely and elderly, that might mean you never talk to anyone, and that the, you know, that in turn has a profound effect on your your well being, your that's mental well being. Well, half a million people in this. In England today, speak to nobody for five days per week. Say that. Do you say that again? Half a million people in England today will speak and to see nobody for five days within a seven-day period. It's really, really concerning. There's going to be two million people who are lonely by. 2025, 2026. Well, I know from, and it's human nature, but I know that our audience this morning will, they'll all be going, that is extraordinary. And, and they'll also be going, what can we do? Mm. You know, how, what, what can I, I'm sitting here and I've got my family around. Well, maybe not, maybe they're one of the lonely people. You know, most people, the TV yes. is their main companion. That's what people tell us. But what can people, what can you do? Yeah, it's quite hard to approach someone, isn't it, and say, are you lonely or would you yeah, like to be like, you know, Alex said, you don't want to, someone would be, what are you off? Like, you know, why no, you it's, it, it ha some of it has to come from them. They have to make that first step. As I say, even if that's just to say, help me, they don't need to, to do anything more than that because there are organisations across the country. We're based in Liverpool and Sefton and we have community groups that go out they do one-to-one -one support with individuals. If you've been lonely, it's very scary to get back out into the community. If you've been lonely, how do you go back into an activity? People say, oh, join a group, join a group do yeah. this. How do you do that? I mean, sometimes if you're going out with your mates to the pub, you don't necessarily want to stay in the pub, walk into the pub alone. You want somebody to be with you. So we have... Um, support workers we call them bros um because they're befrienders and they go and they work with the individuals they build their confidence back up self-esteem is really essential with them. um alex just uh, uh, back to the mechanics of what you're doing because again there we people watching this morning say they love the idea mm -hmm. how could they somehow be involved is there a, a register of cafes that have this so yeah. i mean again you get that awkward thing is should you target a cafe to go and talk to someone? But that's a good thing, isn't it? I mean, you, that is, that's yeah, a good well, thing. We, we put a really positive spin on it. So we, could, like, we appreciate the word loneliness. It's got kind of all kinds of connotations, you know. So we try and make it about more getting people chatting. But we also do weekly phone calls for people. We've got 250 volunteers doing weekly phone calls across the country to people. So what I would say is if people are a bit anxious, maybe become a volunteer yourself. Because we've got people who receive calls, now a volunteer, and is now a volunteer supervisor of 10 volunteers. Well, that's, so that's, that's amazing. success, isn't one it? Of yeah. my, one of my volunteers, who's 90, 
He was our volunteer of the year in 2022, this year. Um, you can name check him. <laughs> it's <laughs> Keith. Keith, lovely Keith. Right. Okay. He became a volunteer because his wife died and he was lonely. As we saw in our film. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's meant the world to him and it's meant the world to his daughter as well, the support that he gets. And he goes out and he does the volunteer visiting. He made the phone calls. Mm. Um, and he also goes into nursing homes and community centres and sings for everybody and entertains and he's fantastic. In a funny kind of way, I mean, we're doing a lot of stories about Christmas, which are lovely, but it can polarise mm. loneliness, can't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, very good to see you both here this morning. Thank you so Thank much. And you said good work as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, if you have been affected by any of the issues we were discussing there, there are there is help and there are resources available online.